when Julia Alexander would visit her boyfriend in the garage where he worked as an automobile mechanic, she had no idea that it would result in being diagnosed with a fatal form of cancer known as malignant mesothelioma. But that's exactly what happened, as the small space, lack of ventilation, and frequent exposure to asbestos dust raised by his activities had her breathing the carcinogenic material irregularly. Following her diagnosis she filed a mesothelioma lawsuit against Honeywell International Inc., because it was their company's asbestos-contaminated Bendix break products that her boyfriend used. Though Honeywell filed a motion for summary judgment, arguing that she lacked specific evidence of the amount of exposure that she suffered, District Judge Donald C. Nugent decided against the manufacturer indicating that under Ohio law the information that she was able to provide was sufficient for the case to move forward. There was no argument from Honeywell as to whether Ms. Alexander had in fact been diagnosed with peritoneal mesothelioma, or even whether she had been exposed to Bendix breaks. What the company argued was that she could not show exactly how many of their breaks had been installed in her presence, how long her boyfriend spent grinding each break how often he used compressed air or the exact frequency or length of her exposure, she was not able to satisfy the legal requirements to show causation. Ms. Alexander testified that she believed her mesothelioma was a direct result of having visited her boyfriend two to three times a week, for four hours each visit, over a four-year period from 1987 through 1991. She submitted that the garage was small, only large enough to fit one van at a time, that it had no ventilation system and no vacuum system on the grinder, and that she was in close proximity to the work at all times, sitting less than five feet away from where the brake work was being performed. Not only did she lack protective clothing or a respirator, but the asbestos dust was pervasive particularly when he would use a hammer and blow the brakes with compressed air. Though she was unable to quantify the number of vehicles she was present for, or how many of the jobs he did were specifically installed, repairing or inspecting brakes, she was able to indicate that he only used Bendix brakes. Judge Nugent ruled that though there might be some imprecise data, there was sufficient evidence for her to move forward and pursue her mesothelioma lawsuit seeking compensation for the damages that she suffered. If you or someone you love has been diagnosed with malignant mesothelioma, you need people working on your side. That's what the patient advocates at mesothelioma.net do every single day. For information on how we can help you, contact us at 1-800-692. 8608. Terry Oppenheimer is an independent writer, editor, and proofreader. She graduated from the College of William and Mary with a degree in English. Her dreams of a writing career were diverted by a need to pay her bills. She spent a few years providing copy for a major retailer, then landed a lucrative career in advertising sales. With college bills for all three of her kids paid, she left corporate America for a return to her original goal of writing. She specializes in providing content for websites and finds tremendous enjoyment in the things she learns while doing her research. Her specific areas of interest include health and fitness, medical research, and the law.